What's up guys, Organized Biology here, and today we are going to be going through the cell membrane. But before we do that, I wanna give kind of a brief overview. I love thinking about the cell in terms of a small business, right? So in a small business, say you're making a product. Your small business, you're gonna to have to maybe pay some money, you're gonna to have to bring in all these materials, you're gonna to have to transform those materials, you're gonna to have to ship them out, gain a product back, well, hopefully gain income back, gain money back, right? But you're also going to have to call different companies, maybe call different organizations, different people, so that you can improve your business. And maybe at some point you want to market your business. Maybe you wanna kick some people out because they're doing a really bad job and sometimes you wanna bring some people in. And sometimes maybe you make too much waste so you have to ship that off somewhere and maybe your business starts growing and growing, so now you're bringing in more materials. Well, I just related the cell to a small business, but the one that's doing the actual actions of the small business, transporting things out, transporting things in, making communication, that's the cell membrane, y'all. So the cell membrane is not just this doorway passively letting things in and out willy-nilly. No, this is a master regulator. And a master regulator of what, you may ask? homeostasis. And if you haven't watched my video on homeostasis, please do. It's a really good overview. But what homeostasis means is maintaining this stable set of internal conditions. You see, the goal of every cell, every living thing, is to maintain homeostasis. If you don't maintain homeostasis, or if you're out of it for too long, a lot of disease and damage can occur to your cells or your body. So as we think about that, I want you to think about how this cell membrane is going to maintain the internal, within the cell, its internal conditions properly while separating itself from the outside environment, the extracellular part. So before I go on, just look at this. So this is the cell membrane section. We'll go through the parts. But there's going to be an intracellular component as this membrane wraps all the way around. So this is inside of the cell. And then there's going to be an outside component, the extracellular part. This also may be called the ECF, that stands for extracellular fluid, so if you ever see that in a textbook, that's what the ECF is. And remember what I just said, the goal is to maintain homeostasis in this area. But the crazy thing is, is this is just one cell of your 30 trillion. So a lot of the times, certain cells will get out of homeostasis for the greater good of keeping your entire body in homeostasis. Now that, that's crazy, that's selfless of these cells. Let's give these cells a round of applause, right? So cells are selfless most of the time, uh, unless they're cancerous, then they're incredibly selfish. But let's move on. Plasma membrane, cell membrane, same thing. If you look at it, you can see multiple components and a lot of the times when you see a cell membrane or your teacher's talking, they're just talking about one part of the cell membrane. And that part is the phospholipid bilayer. So I'm going to highlight that. This is one little segment of the phospholipid bilayer. And as you can see, the circle is the phosphate group. And then the tail is the lipid portion. So phospholipid bilayer. That's how we get that name. And as you can see, since it's orange, it is a lipid. But it's not just a lipid. See, the, th the amazing thing about um, the cell membrane is that there's multiple components, okay? So as you can see, the blue represent proteins. And they all have different shapes, different sizes, different configurations that will do different things depending on their structure. So we're gonna go be going through the structure and functions of those proteins in a later episode but I just wanted to point out a few of them uh, right now. So these are different structures that it can be, but you also see some red. These are carbohydrates that are attached to a blue protein, which are called glycoproteins. Glyco meaning sugar, obviously protein meaning protein, so sugar proteins, and they're on the outside of the cell. So a lot of these times they have to do with different receptors and bringing certain things in or receiving a message uh, telling the cell, um, or also maybe marketing themselves, saying, hey, I am this cell, don't hurt me, I'm a part of the body, you don't wanna mess with this. Um, so one last thing that I wanna go through with the cell membrane that is so vitally important. The phosphate heads are what are called hydrophilic. 
So hydrophilic, hydro meaning water and philic meaning liking. So if it is hydrophilic, it likes water. So water can be flowing around the outside really just willy nilly. It doesn't really bother anything because the phosphates like it. It can kind of uh, bond with it in a way likely or uh, lightly so that water can flow easily. Now, the center part, these lipids are hydrophobic. Okay. So if it is hydrophobic, it doesn't like water. So water cannot pass through that very easily. Because um, if you've ever seen oil in water, if you pour oil onto water, the oil will actually separate from the water. It doesn't like it. It keeps itself separate. However, the phosphates, once again, will integrate with the water. It'll kind of let it flow through easily and nicely. So you've got kind of, well, you're mostly made of water, right? So most of your intracellular fluid is going to be water. Most of your extracellular fluid is water. So it's important that the phosphates are on the outside of both. Okay, so that's going to be really important because we'll see later on that small lipid molecules can actually squeeze through and pop through really easily. Whereas water specifically can't really wiggle its way in very well. A lot of the times it needs a small protein called an aquaporin water hole to allow it through. So potentially this could be a aquaporin where water flows through passively um, into it or out of it, depending on other factors. So we're going to get into that later. But once again, big picture, um, cell membranes more than just a uh, lipid, not more than just a phospholipid bilayer. It's got proteins, it's got carbohydrates, it's got all of these components that help regulate the cell, maintain homeostasis. And one final term that I forgot to give you is that the whole cell membrane is considered a fluid mosaic model. Weird name, right? Fluid, meaning because it can kind of change its form, change its shape, depending on how much cholesterol is embedded in these uh, hydrophobic portions. And mosaic, if you've ever seen a mosaic, it's a beautiful, uh, maybe like stained glass that has all these colors and shapes and sizes. Well, you look at the membrane, it's got all these colorful shapes and sizes and different components. So it's a fluid mosaic model of the cell membrane. I hope this was helpful. It was a brief overview. We're going to be talking about different things in the future regarding the cell membrane. But once again, like, subscribe, let me know if you have questions, and I appreciate you watching this video. Happy learning.